Tenakoto Katoa. Welcome to Let's Make the Ocean Great Again. The session is with James Nicotine, marine scientist, blue economy consultant, and founder of Manaya Productions and Blue Cradle. Um, we are going to hear from James to begin with, and then we're going to open it up to some conversation later. So I ask that you please refrain from using the chat, uh, unless you have a technical issue, until such time that we are doing the Q&A. And also to just be mindful that we want to hear from everyone, especially some new voices and people that we haven't heard from much. So please be mindful of giving everybody a chance and practicing curiosity and compassion when others are talking. Um, you probably know the drill by now. We've uploaded the program into the chat and there's a link to a Google Doc for this particular session where you can collect your thoughts and leave your email address if you would like to know more. So I'll now um, hand it over to you, James. Can you hear me? Thank you, Kit. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, awesome. Great. Thank you for joining everyone. That was wonderful, the poetry. Um, I'm still reflecting on that. So thank you, Alina and Daisy, for the session before. If you were there, I was uh, listening and closing my eyes. Um, uh, tenakoto, tenakoto, tenakoto kartoa. Uh, greetings. I'm James Nicotine. So as Kit introduced me, I'm going to run a session today about making the ocean great, great again. Um, and I'm going to tell you how we can do that here and now. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen, if I can do that. Uh, I think I'm supposed to click here and then I can do this and then hopefully you can see the screen. Great. So let's make the ocean great again. Um, so this is a quote from Kennedy that I lo love. Um, Knowledge of the oceans is more than a matter of curiosity. Our very survival may hinge upon it. So just you know, remember that as we go, uh, as we move forward. Um, we don't have a, a, an awful amount of time, so I'll just slowly go through this. Who am I? I'm James Nicotine, uh, French, British, marine scientist, consultant. I'm the founder of CEO of um, some of the companies you can see on the right. So Blue Cradles just recently launched as a charity. Uh, I'm an Edmund Hillary Fellow. I'm the founder of Manaya Productions, and I'm also a consultant with my own um, consultancy business. I work with the UN, IUCN, a number of foundations and scientific institutions. I'm a father, I'm a husband, um, and I'm based in Ototahi, Christchurch. Um, so straight into it, New Zealand's ocean country, fourth largest EZ in the world. This is what we're gonna be talking about. Um, so some of you are not familiar with the whole EZ. Uh, I'm not either. I've not been to any of those islands. Um, I've seen the coast. I love New Zealand. It's a beautiful place. Uh, it's not a small island state. It's a large ocean state. Um, and, you know, everything goes in and out of New Zealand, as we know. It's, you know, it's an import export uh, place. So we have to import what we don't have and we have to export what we have a lot of. That's how the economy works. Um, so in terms of the blue economy, um, so, I mean, first off, culturally, Te Moana, our marine environment is really central to the identity here. So um, remember that for later as well. Uh, in terms of numbers, just to give you a bit of information there, it's 7.4 billion uh, directly that the blue economy contributes uh, in terms of GDP, it's 1.9%. Um, and that's roughly 100,000 jobs. Um, it's actually increasing 2% per annum. Uh, with actually an interesting drop in offshore minerals, which is, you know, good or bad, but uh, certainly it has less uh, impact on the, on the environment. Uh, the challenge that we're facing, I don't know if you read the recent report by the Ministry for Environment, is really, we have um, a really big storm uh, of, you know, uh, cumulative stresses on the ocean environment, climate change, ocean warming, acidification, habitat loss. Um, these are really significant problems that we have a lot of it is from land, what we do on land, land, you know, agricultural runoff, plastic pollution, but also overfishing, deep sea bottom trawling, uh, to some extent, the lack of interest, the lack of increased protection as well. Uh, it's worth noting only 0.4% of the, uh, New Zealand waters are actually protected uh, when the target is 10% in 2010, uh, sorry, 2020 and 30% in 2030. Um, so how can we make the ocean great again? Uh, this is a tricky question. <laughs> Um, but perhaps there's an answer in the sustainable blue economy. So the sustainable blue economy, as we know it, is the World Bank's definition is 
the sustainable use of ocean resources for economic growth, um, jobs, livelihoods, and also preserving the health of the ocean ecosystem. So this is something that we're trying to push forward as a, as a different way of doing things, more regenerative. Uh, it's in line with the sustainable development goals and specifically looking at life below water uh, goal number 14. Um, this means that you know, whatever we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing it uh, with the sort of circular view of not exploiting the, the marine environment as we have, but actually regenerating it and creating jobs and, and, and livelihoods for people. So these are some of the sub-targets that the Ocean SDG have. Uh, I'm not going to read them all out to you, but it sort of gives you an idea of the significant work that we have to do in all those areas. So reducing marine pollution, restoring ecosystems, reducing acidification, uh, but also ending subsidies, for example, and enforcing the law of the sea. These are fundamental so we can move forward um, with a sustainable, robust blue economy. Um, it's worth noting that 2021 next year is actually the start of the UN Oceans Decade, which means that it's basically a commitment by governments and scientific institutions to uh, increase research in the ocean space, oceanography, marine biology, and inform sustainable development. So, um, you know, it's a great opportunity to, to invest in, in, in this space because uh, I don't know if you know, but, you know, in this pandemic time, actually COVID-19, the test that is being used uh, actually works um, partly with an enzyme found in a bacteria at the bottom of the sea found in, the, in a hydrothermal vent. So, you know, there's only 10% of the ocean that's been explored. 10% um, of species have been, ex uh, you know, discovered. So there's a, an incredible amount of work that we need to do. Um, and some of these, uh, you know, so, yeah, some of the scientific research will actually solve world problems. Um, these are some of the existing sectors that are already here. Offshore minerals, as I said before, declining, shipping, fisheries, aquaculture, uh, marine services, tourism, construction, um, manufacturing, defense, government. I mean, all these are, are sort of traditional blue economy sectors. Um, but these are others, uh, emerging opportunities, which I've listed here a little bit, um, which some of you don't know about, some you probably will. Um, but I just want to get you thinking about the, the, you know, the opportunity here, the, the ocean tech space, seaweed farming for packaging, uh, blue carbon to, you know, to limit, uh, you know, store some of the carbon we've put up in the, at the atmosphere. Open ocean aquaculture is, is relatively new. It's basically aquaculture, but instead of doing it in the coastal area, you do it out offshore. Um, so there's a tremendous amount of, of opportunities to respond to our big challenges, such as food security, health, um, and also provide jobs. Um, offshore wind, uh, but, you know, biotech, all these areas are super, super, uh, you, know, you know, we're probably ahead of a boom uh, in all these sectors worldwide. Um, just a few thoughts on some of the, I think, really important points here is the blue economy in order to be sustainable and if we want to make the ocean great again, we're going to have to create these marine protected areas. Marine protected areas are areas of the ocean where we have ecosystems thriving, where we're protecting them from, from, from pressures such as anthropogenic pressures, fishing, uh, mining and, and places like that. So we need to work with this concept of a marine protected area. And they provide a range of benefits, social benefits, economic benefits, it's proven. So we need to expand those. Some are advocating for 50%. Uh, right now, the targets worldwide that we need to reach is 30% by 2030. Um, another really key fact is regenerative. I think we need to have a new narrative for the ocean. We thought the ocean was too big to fail, too big to fix. It's actually too big to ignore. So I recommend you read this piece by Jen Lubchenko. Um, about how we need to change that narrative and obtain and sort of adopt this regenerative narrative for the ocean. And finally, the Mataranga Maori, which is in sort of a, a, a English translation for it, is the knowledge, comprehension of understanding of everything visible, but also what's invisible existing in the universe. So this is sort of the wisdom from the indigenous culture of New Zealand. So, so the indigenous people have this sort of vision um, and it's very, very strong here in New Zealand. And I think there is a significant um, way forward for that. And it's probably the secret, you know, secret weapon of, of New Zealand. Um, as you can see in this project, the Moana project, it's a forecasting oceanographic pro uh, project that's looking at basically um, 
understanding how circulation, ocean circulation around New Zealand in the EEZ is actually connected to the productivity of, of fisheries. So it's forecasting to underpin New Zealand's blue economy, but also in this sort of Mataoranga Maori way of seeing the world. So it's really, really interesting. These are the sorts of projects that um, should be promoted and increased. And this is a, a, a multi-stakeholder partnership, I think between 25 organizations in New Zealand. It's absolutely fundamental that we move forward with more of these. Um, uh, so now this is the exercise time. Um, I just want you to sort of uh, capture some of what I've just uh, read and told you uh, and try and imagine Aotearoa, uh, sorry, Aotearoa New Zealand in 10 years time, in 2030. And you pick one area of the blue economy that you think we should increase uh, and develop. And then how can we make those bold de decisions that have a real impact? And then you'll report back with one, make, one great main action per group, and then we'll try and uh, summarize all that. So these are some of the themes that I've just thrown out there. Um, education, tourism, aquaculture, tech, and perhaps you can figure out your own. Uh, but basically we'll have five minutes to imagine what you see as the future of the sustainable blue economy here in New Zealand. And then we can come back in five minutes. Hugh, fire ahead. Yeah, Hugh, yep. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah, so our group mostly just talked about uh, sort of imposing, uh, I guess, ideas like Arahui over certain areas, uh, possibly to reach that 30%, and whether it would be fixed or moving or a combination of fixed and moving. Uh, we weren't quite sure, and I think we'd leave up to experts like you, James. Um, but uh, Christo, one of the people in the group, mentioned that he's already seen uh, dolphins and cow eye bubbling in the coast near him uh, since people haven't been going out there on their boats. So having a complete ban over these areas rather than just a no fishing ban might be a way to um, free up these areas for uh, the life to return unhindered. So that's, that's kind of where, where we got to. Yeah, thank you for that. No, that's a great one. Yeah, Rahu is uh, just like no take marine reserves, but they're community led. So they're, they're led by the, the iwi or the hapu and, and, and that's what we need more of. Thank you for that, Hugh. Anyone else has a, a, a cool idea? Megan, yeah. Um, hi, yeah, I think the, our group really said education was key, but we also came away with the bold, bold move that we'd like to see in 10 years is more protect marine protection, so more marine areas protected. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's fundamental to review the marine reserves in place and the, and the policy frameworks that supports that, but also increase and New Zealand's way behind on that. So hopefully that will happen soon. Thank you for that. Yep. Kaitia Kitanga. All right. One more or do we have, do we have enough time? Barry? Yeah, we do. I see Anna's hand popping up there. <laughs> Oh, just move. Um, we also talked about marine reserves, um, but also with like a collaborative model with the seaweed seaweed farming sector in New Zealand, and using that like the benefits um, of making money from seaweed farming attached to marine reserves and kind of the untapped industry there that we haven't really got up and going yet. And that's kind of what we discussed. Yeah, no, that's really good. A uh, combined model of uh, aquaculture and marine conservation. We're seeing that pop up in other places around the world. There was a project recently I was involved with in the East, Eastern Africa in Zanzibar. They're, they're doing that with uh, sea cucumber farming and there's, it's inside a reserve. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really, really good model. Thank you for that. All right, I think, is that everyone's input? Yeah, thank you very much for that. Well, uh, I'll just conclude, so I'll share my screen again, if I can do that, yeah, it's there. Um, so I'll just share you briefly what I'm up to um, with uh, Blue Cradle. So Blue Cradle is basically a new charity uh, that's working to promote the conservation and regeneration of the oceans, ecosystems and species through education, advocacy, ocean literacy and digital content creation. So we're going to be getting a sailboat based here in Christchurch, Littleton, and we'll be 
basically uh, welcoming schools and students and researchers to go around New Zealand and elsewhere to create digital content, but also crucially do, uh, conduct marine research, uh, social science, and just basic research that you can do from a ship. Um, so get involved if you wanna, if you wanna hear more. Um, this is just a few final slides. Yes, we can make the ocean great again if we all work together. Uh, that's just a positive slide and just a bit more reading. So Blue Economy uh, report that I encourage you to read, Ocean Finance Handbook. Someone had a, a finance question earlier. I found that really relevant and also Ocean Literacy for All uh, by UNESCO. So thank you so much, everyone. It's been, it's been great. It's been very compact. There was a lot to cover. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll make sure you get the slides in, in the shared document. Over to you, Barry. Thanks so much, James. That was an awesome session. And um, yeah, really appreciate your energy. And it's great to learn more about what you're up to. And once again, just a reminder that, yeah, all that information in the slides is in the shared Google Doc associated with the session. And if you want to leave your email address in there to connect to other people in your sessions, you can do so. So, yep, now it's time to move to your new Zoom room. So I'll stay here if you're into the next one. Thanks so much. Kakite anō.